Hey, what's up, YouTube world? It is your girl here, the Venusian Bull, and I am back with another astrological tea video in regards to my celebrity natal readings. And you know, I just had to get my opinion, my astrological perspective in on this whole Cardi, Nikki, B, Barbs versus Vardy gang and all of that jazz. If you've been living under a rock, you know that last Friday during New York Fashion Week, Nikki and Cardi got into an altercation. Everybody's been talking about it. Everybody's been putting in their two cents. And I just wanted to put in my two cents from an astrological perspective now, since I know that I can be long-winded, um, I'm going to be doing this, these videos in parts. So in this video, I'm going to specifically be talking about Cardi, and then I'll do a separate video on Nikki. And depending on how I feel after that, I may do their synastry. I'm not sure if I'm going to get into it, but um, we'll see. But this video is going to be about Cardi specifically, um, her natal chart, and then I'm also going to look at her transits for that day. Okay, so let's start off here. All right, so Cardi B was born on October 11th, 92 in the Bronx, and um, there's not a verified birth time for her, so we don't technically know her ascendant, but I do strongly suspect her to be a Gemini rising. She does already have a Gemini South node, which makes so much sense because if you remember from my uh, astrological tea when I was discussing the signs, Gemini is the sign of the streets. Gemini represents the hood, and you kind of don't get more street or more hood than Cardi B. So, and also when we're discussing the South Node, you know, these are traits and, you know, characteristics that you're bringing over from past lives that you kind of have to rid yourself of in this life. So her North Node is in Sagittarius, which ironically is Nicki Minaj's sun sign, um, Sagittarius, and Offset, by the way, but we're not getting into that right now. But um, yeah, so Cardi B's South Node is in Gemini, and it's really difficult for her to, you know, she in this lifetime, she's supposed to be expanding her horizons, higher learning, um, traveling, international, understanding new and philosophical concepts, not being so, you know, like stuck on you know where you're from and your your neighborhood and just this whole like you know for lack of a better word street ghetto vibe she's supposed to i'm you know pun intended she's supposed to become more cultured in this lifetime you know um her baby's name is culture so um with that sagittarius north node and it's like she has all of the tools to do this and to become this kind of international, you know, superstar and to be, you know, more well-rounded and more, you know, cultured and things of that nature, more um, uh, higher learning, more well-traveled. She has all the tools. She's um, one of the biggest stars out right now, but that Gemini South Node kicks in all of the time. And um, I'm going to say something that may be a little off-putting, but it's just this is Gemini energy, you know, just in general. Gemini energy does lack a moral compass. And Sagittarius, the opposite sign of Gemini, is the sign of morals. It is the sign of morality. So um, with that being said, I do feel like there are some instances in Cardi B's career where she has kind of lacked that moral compass. Um, most recently, I heard about something she did a few years back. It was like the Real Housewives of like civil rights leaders or something like that. Go look that, go look that up. Um, it was a few years ago. It was before Bodak Yellow came out and maybe even before she was on Love and Hip Hop. I'm not 100% sure, but um, it kind of seemed like a desperate attempt to be famous. And it, it was kind of done in poor taste, like everybody on that show um, or that clip or whatever. I think uh, TMZ was the one who put it out. And I didn't even know about this that Cardi did until like a week or two ago. So, um, I mean, she was the only person 
in that group who became really famous. And um, I mean, it was, it was kind of like in poor taste, but it is what it is. Also, um, in reference to uh, that Gemini South node, it's, um, she's so strong on like, kind of like not wanting to change. Like, I am who I am, I'm going to be who I be. And that's, you know, the reason why people, you know, like me and stuff like that. And Gemini lacks, Gemini energy, they lack a filter. So that's why she be all popping off at the mouth and she don't give a shit and everything like that. I will say this, Sagittarius lacks a filter too. Don't get it twisted. They are ruled by Jupiter and they're known to blow things out of proportion. But um, Gemini like I said before, they kind of lack that moral compass. So like when a Gemini says they don't give a fuck, like they do not give a fuck. Okay. Like for real, like her, her dark sided Gemini tendencies definitely come out. And regardless of if she's a Gemini rising or not, she has a Gemini South node. So that Gemini energy is strong in her. Uh, also, just due to the fact that she's a rapper too. Gemini is the sign of the rapper and everything like that. So that also comes into play as well. Um, so another thing that um, I wanted to point out about her is um, another part of her that makes her so combative. Remember in the Beyonce video, I was talking about numerology and I was incorporating that into it. So she has, um, well, let me go back to her birth number first before I go to her son. She, she was born on the 11th, okay, of October and 11, is a difficult number to deal with. It's a number of conflict and 11 breaks down to two. Two is moon energy and the moon rules women. So this could be issues with women. Oh my God, I was looking at her chart uh, earlier today. There's so many, she has so many challenging aspects to her moon. Um, so that kind of echoes in her chart with issues with women. Like it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, so I'll get into that in a minute. But um, she also has her son in Libra, and um, Libra is a very um, chill type of energy. It's, it's harmonious, it's diplomatic, it wants to keep the peace and everything like that. It's artistic, it's about beauty. But her son is at the 18th degree. One plus eight breaks down to nine. Nine represents Mars energy, which is akin to Aries. So that makes her a hard Libra. So that automatically makes her a less harmonious type of Libra, okay? And also, to add insult to injury, <laughs> her moon is in Aries. So she's naturally a combative person. She's naturally about conflict. She's naturally, her instinct, because the moon has to deal with your instincts and your emotional reactions to things. When somebody hurts her or she feels attacked, her natural instinct is that she's going to want to fight. Like, that's, that's an Aries for you. That's Aries energy. Remember when I discussed this in my signs video talking about Aries, they, they down to fight. So, um, and I know I'm not going to get that much into Nikki right now, but when it comes to the whole like bark and bite thing, you know, Cardi is definitely more of the bite and Nikki is more of the bark if we're going to keep it 100. Nikki's still a Sag, Nikki's still a fire sign, so don't get it twisted, and that's mutable energy. She's capable of throwing them hands, but it's, it's more natural for, um, for Cardi, especially going back to that, uh, that Gemini South node, and then you add Aries into the mix. It's, that just makes a combative person. She's always going to be fighting, okay, all the time. All right, and um, another thing that I wanted to point out about Cardi's chart is that she has Mars in Cancer, okay? <laughs> All right, and we discussed this. Mars is in the fall when it's in Cancer. Mars is not happy being in Cancer. It, Mars is about action and aggression and assertion. It's weird. I think that she has... Um, yeah, she has her planets in, uh, and this is like a new term, a mutual reception, I think is what it's called, because her moon is in Aries and the moon rules Cancer and her Mars is in Cancer and Mars rules Aries. So they're like opposite. So they're not working like on the right kind of playing field, especially that Mars. So the whole allegation about, you know, Nikki or somebody in Nikki's camp saying something about Cardi's 
child saying something negative about her child or her parenting, that hit her hard. As a Mars and Cancer person, like, you can't play when you talk about people's family. Like, they will be ready to fight you in a second. It doesn't even matter. And this is the thing, because I've been hearing, you know, a lot of people say, well, who cares if, you see, if she says something about her child? And other people are like, well, you know, I can understand if she said something about her child. I can understand her being down to fight. We don't actually know what was said. The fact of the matter is, is that with Cardi having a Mars in Cancer, it doesn't matter what Nikki said or didn't say. If she, if Cardi heard something, even something insinuated about her saying something about her child, she's gonna want to buck up. Nuck if you buck. She got that moon in Aries. She's gonna want to fight a bitch. She just is. She just is. She's bringing, uh, she's bringing fucking love and hip hop to couture fashion shows. Like that's that's what Cardi is doing. And um, this is so amazing. Like if more people understood astrology, you would be able to see that. But I just been hearing all of these different people talk about it. And I was like, I got to look at her chart. Like I got to look at her placements. And I've looked at her chart before, but obviously this incident has prompted me to do that even more. So I had to look further and see in just those three points that I mentioned, her moon or four points rather, her moon, her south node, her Mars, and her sun at the 18th degree already is like, you know, gearing up for like this moment. And um, uh, Cardi also has her Mercury in Scorpio, okay? So um, Scorpio is a very vengeful type of energy. She actually has a stellium in Scorpio, her Pluto, Venus, and Mercury. So um, she's working with some heavy, heavy Scorpio energy. And um, they're very vengeful, they're very vindictive, but they're also very, you know, strategic as well. So when you put that in, I, I believe, because uh, Cardi, you know, has been publicly at the same events as Nikki, you know, for, you know, the past couple of months, they were both at the Met Gala. They were both at the MTV Beauty and Music Awards where they had words exchanged. The Met Gala, the beef was supposed to be squashed and apparently it wasn't. I thought that that whole photo was fake anyway about how they allegedly squashed the beef. It was just for optics. But, um, but yeah, then at the MTV Video Music Awards, Cardi B said something, you know, it was something insinuating Nicki Minaj. She didn't say her name, but it was insinuating Nicki Minaj. And then all of a sudden, after that, we find out that they both unfollowed each other on Instagram. And I was like, I don't even understand why they were both following each other in the first place. And I'm going to get to the social media component of this in a minute. But um, with that Mercury and Scorpio, particularly, um, it makes somebody very, like, strategic also. So I believe that Cardi just needed an opportunity. Oh, this the next time I'm going to see this bitch? Yeah, I'm about to go in. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's like, she knew. Like, this was, like, premeditated. She, I, I believe that Cardi knew that she was about to go in there. Maybe not take her shoe off and all of that stuff, but she knew that she was going to go in there and confront Nicki Minaj about what she said or what she thought that Nicki said about her child or what have you. And, um, you know, um, the whole social media thing, and, I, and again, this is a, a, a speculated birth time on my part, but I think it may be accurate because it would put her moon in the 11th house. And the 11th house that's social media all day. That's the internet. That's akin to Aquarius energy. So she has a Libra son. Libras already care about what people think about them. I've mentioned this several times. Libras just do. They want to be likable. They want people to like them. And um, with her having her moon, and her moon is opposite uh, her son as well. So um, this is also the conflict with women. With her having her moon in the 11th house, this is her always want to react always wanted to react on social media it, it, that that's her instinct that's her you know automatic default um she's not able to just be on social media like post um pictures and images and videos of her work and her videos and you know projects coming up and things like that she has to clap back like she got the moon and aries in the 11th house it's like she can't even help it like she can't. And I thought this before, you know, I, I suspected her moon to be in the 11th house, but it just, it makes so much sense. 
she can't help it. I remember she deactivated her Instagram before because of all of this stuff that Azalea Banks said about her. And, you know, she just got it back. So, you know, I mean, obviously she needs her social media. That's a, a major, major, major part of her career. She's like not going to get rid of her social media. But at the same time, everybody's saying that she should log off and she should, but she's not. And neither is Nikki. And when I get to Nikki's chart, I'll talk about that too, because she has a whole bunch of 11th house energy as well. So um, they're going to continue to communicate online. And they go out of their way to, you know, see what the other person is liking on each other's posts. And, you know, Cardi B and Nikki both have a lot of fan pages. So I know that they're getting stuff in their DMs and information from, you know, the Barb's or the Barty gang or whatever the case may be. But still, like, for you to be all up in that and, and looking at that and everything like that, it's just too much. It's just too much. I, I'm sorry. I have to bring it there. And I, I, I have to do it. Like, this is why Beyonce flourishes and all of these other girls are stuck, like, fighting and stuff because she be minding her own goddamn business. Like, it's just, mind your own goddamn business, put it in your goddamn music, and, you know, work towards your goals and stuff like that. You know, a lot of people are saying that they don't feel like, you know, this incident is going to affect Cardi's career because she was, you know, for lack of a better word, you know, ghetto and a hood rat when she came onto the scene with Bodak Yellow, even when, you know, love and hip hop happened, but really when she became mainstream with her music and everything, she was still known as the ghetto girl. Like, you know what? I'm not going to change. I'm not going to do that or whatever. I'm going to be me. I'm going to be, you know, authentically me or whatever the case may be. So because people like her for that, it's not, you know, likely that she would change that about her. However, that North Node and Sag she's going to have moments where it's going to, she's going to be forced to change. Um, she's going to be forced to, you know, look at things from a different perspective, from a higher level and not just, you know, completely react on instinct and, you know, your immediate thought, you know, kind of like use that Scorpio energy to your advantage and be strategic plan, you know, um, plan and that Libra energy. You know what I mean? Don't immediately jump to conclusions and stuff like that. So um, I think that that's what's going to kind of hurt um, Cardi B. But in terms of her career, I mean, obviously, she's one of the biggest artists out right now, rapper or otherwise, you know, so she's not going anywhere. Uh, just keep on releasing new music. Just keep on doing new projects. You know what I mean? Just I know she got a Tom Ford lipstick line. She's doing stuff with Fashion Nova. Um, I haven't really heard much more about music, but I do know that she just released a video for one of the songs off of her album with Kehlani and everything like that, as did uh, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj released her video for Barbie Dream. So amidst all of this stuff, um, they're still making business moves, making money moves, for lack of a better word. But it's like, we would still be all up into your 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 music and your business stuff, even if you didn't, you know, create all this controversy with the fight. So, you know, it is what it is with that. But I did want to reference some of her aspects, especially her aspects to the moon, because like I said before, clearly, I believe, I believe Cardi has issues with women, um, as does Nicki Minaj. Um, but, uh, Cardi doesn't have a lot of positive aspects to her moon. So she has moon quincunx Venus. Venus is already a feminine energy that represents women too. So that's a conflict there. She has moon square Mars. That's literally like, cause Mars has to deal with combat and fighting and things like that. That's literally fighting women and stuff like that. Um, she has a uh, moon square Uranus. Um, so that could even be issues with, you know, friends and, um, things of that nature that not working out. She having to cut friends off and stuff. Um, moon square Neptune. Um, that's like being deceived. 
uh, particularly by women or not uh, being able to trust women and things of that nature. But Neptune in and of itself, it's difficult when you have challenging aspects to Neptune because Neptune represents so many things. But on the negative side, it represents lies, deceit, cheating that could be associated with her relationship with um offset as well and kind of that whole um incident with those uh those strippers or something in, something or another um like she allegedly got these apparently dudes to um beat up these girls these strippers who she thought allegedly was having sex with offset and i'm like girl he's already been cheating on you like like just divorce him or get to break up with him. I don't understand why you are gonna have these girls beat up Alleg allegedly. I, I believe that it actually happened. Uh, the uh, actual girl said that it happened or whatever. I just like to say allegedly, just you know, so nobody can come for me. But um, yeah, so that moon square Neptune. That's also that moon square Mars and everything like that. Um, and she also has moon quincunx Pluto and Pluto. And she has Pluto and Scorpio. Pluto is a very, very powerful planet. It's all about power. It's about um, control. Um, it's like, and a lot of it has to deal with um, people maybe having control over her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like I would say, I would say at this point, and I may have to look at her um, aspects, I don't really know if she's completely in control, like, of her, you know, destiny and of herself and things like that. She would have to really, really work um, towards dealing with these um, obstacles in her chart to really be in control of her destiny. Like, she is, but she isn't, you know, and it's, you know, the people around her if she just has, you know, like, yes, people around her and things like that, and people who are going to always, you know, be in her corner, even when she does, you know, fucked up things, then, you know, it is what it is. Um, at the same token, um, I understand that Cardi is going to be Cardi, and that's, that's what it is. Um, she is going to be that. She's not really going to change much if at all, but I do think that you kind of have to stop and think about when it comes to you being like a love and hip hop famous versus being like mainstream famous and being invited to events at, and parties at fashion week and things of that nature, the Met Gala, you know, the Grammys, performing at the Grammys and things of that nature. When does something like this incident, you know, when do you decide, okay, this is not something that I should be doing anymore. I'm on a different level now. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to do these things. I'm making money, making money moves. Like she said, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm rich. Like I don't, I shouldn't, like, I don't have to deal with this shit. Like I have, you know, um, I have things that are working in my favor. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's like, why let these things get the best of you? You know what I mean? And I think that um, that's one of her, you know, big issues. That that Mars square moon aspect is like, it's going to be really, really hard for her to overcome her immediate ability or immediate instinct, rather, to want to fight a bitch. Like, specifically a bitch. Because, like... It, this a lot of this has to deal with her conflicts with women not so much with men which in my opinion is why she's still with offset you know what i'm saying like i'm just keeping it all the way 100 now she does have some challenging aspects to her son which son does represent men so she does have sun opposite moon um she has sun square mars so um they have issues obviously amongst themselves and things like that um, but she also does have sun trying Saturn. So I don't know something about her wants this for the long haul and really wants to make this work. Um, you know, I don't know if she thinks that this is like, you know, a Jay-Z and Beyonce type of situation or whatever, but it's not, it's not that type of romance. Um, and then she has sun square Uranus. That's not good. And then she has sun square Neptune. So that is immediately, that makes me think of a man lying to you, cheating on you, deceiving you, and stuff like that. So, I mean, 
I don't know how long she's going to plan to stay with Offset. Um, it's like he's a Sag, but a lot of his actions are not really going to be conducive to her growth because it's going to take her back into her uh, South Node ways. Um, I'm not going to pull up his chart. I just know that he's a Sag. But, um, but yeah, that's not going to that's not really going to work for her in terms of her growth and things like that. Um, and it's, and it's blatant. And I, and I believe that she knows about all of these things. And then, you know, she puts stuff out there, you know, publicly or whatever to, um, you know, to go beat up these girls and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, that's that, that's that Aries energy. That Aries energy is strong in her chart. It's very, 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 very strong. And um, there was something else that I was going to say about that. Um, let me take a look here. Well, she does have Mars trying Pluto. So that could mean getting money from men or support from men because Mars represents men as well. Um, Pluto does uh, uh, lend itself to... because. Pluto rules Scorpio and her Pluto is in Scorpio. So that's about collaboration. That's about support and um, things of that nature. So that is something positive. And that's probably something that, you know, he's given her or whatever, but she would be a star regardless of her association with Offset. So she doesn't really need Offset in order for her to still continue to be successful. But um, clearly she's in love and Sagittarius, if this birth time is right, which I, I, I think that I think that she really is a Gemini rising. Sagittarius would be on her seventh house cusp and um, her North Node would be in her seventh house. So um, yeah, she's gonna run into these types of guys who are gonna want their freedom. And she has Venus and Scorpio. So she really wants to conjunct Pluto. So she really wants to hold dear to her man like she wants that closeness she wants that emotional bond and like and commitment and i don't really think that he's able to give that to her um based on her chart setup another thing that i wanted to point out and this is another thing that's leaning me towards this being her like around about birth time and or her being uh gemini rising that would put um leo on the third house cusp in chiron in the third house the third house represents communication of all t of all kinds and when you have leo on the cusp of the third house this is a very authoritative communicated type of person it's um uh very bossy very my way or the highway and then you have chiron there and um chiron deals with yes it's the wounded healer but chiron can also be a bitch like chiron is um represents uh things that can hurt or harm you and things of that nature so you put chiron in leo in the third house that's like things that have to deal with communication and communicating with others can hurt her in the long run um Let's see here. Um, it looks like she also has Mars opposite Uranus and opposite Neptune. Um, you know, I don't know if in the beginning of their relationship, her and Offset, like they thought he, it was like it was a, a just friends type of thing that Mars opposite Uranus, because Uranus does represent friends um, and they have like some type of understanding. Maybe they do. And she's aware of that but she doesn't want to admit to that. Um, but allegedly they got married secretly, which is very, um, you know, Venus and Scorpio and things like that, Mercury and Scorpio as well. So, um, and then uh, to top it all off, she, if this is the right rising sign, she would have her son in the fifth house. So that makes her kind of Leo-esque in a way. So um, very much wanting to be the center of attention. It's the sign of the entertainer. So very much um, wanting to be the star, but also very like it's a fixed energy. It's my way, the highway. It's um, very, you know, authoritative and, um, you know, I very, uh, very strong willed person. Um, and I don't take no shit from nobody type of thing. 
So um, that's what I see. I'm trying to think of anything else before I end this video. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get on here and um, briefly discuss um, Cardi's chart here. It's very interesting. And she um, also does have her Chiron at the 20th degree that breaks down the two. That's moon energy. That's women. Um, so a lot, a lot of issues with women here um, as themes of women. Venus is at the 20th degree. Um, so yeah, that's a uh, very significant. Saturn is at the 11th degree that breaks down the two. So, um, that's kind of running rampant in her chart. And one thing that I did want to point out, and this isn't really in relation to her, um, altercation with Nikki, but it's always something that I was curious about. Cardi's speech and, um, you know, people talking about the way that she talks and things like that. So, um, you know, Mercury um, rules Gemini. Gemini is her south node. Um, Gemini does rule communication. And um, her Mercury itself is in square to Saturn. So um, that's kind of restrictions and limitation on the way that she communicates. So um, I don't know, like, I'm like, do people really have publicists anymore? Like the only person who really has a publicist is like Beyonce. And, um, Cardi B does have a publicist, but I believe that your publicist should, especially in Cardi's case, should just be your publicist. You know what I'm saying? When you have your publicist acting as other, like wearing other hats, like also being a stylist, also being this and also being that, it kind of, um, you know, negates what they're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, you know, at some point, you know, if you're in Cardi's camp, you got to be like, log off or don't respond to this or don't respond to that granted everybody's going to do what they want to do at the end of the day but everything that you do off of instinct and emotion is not advantageous to you so you know that's something to think about as well but um yeah so uh i hope that you enjoyed this video of me kind of breaking down uh cardi b's chart and I'll be back in the next video where I break down Nikki's chart. So you definitely want to stay tuned. All right. See you guys later. Bye.